welcome everyone this evening here in the name of the Lord. It's tonight we begin that three-part drama that will end actually on Easter Sunday. And the early church always thought of this as one continual service. That's why tonight, tomorrow night, there is no benediction. The story keeps going until it gets all the way to the empty tomb and the resurrection of our Lord. And tonight we're in the upper room as we start this journey. And we'll look at that promised treasure that comes from Jesus' side. The soldier pierces his side and outflows blood and water. And that will connect right to tonight, to the Passover, as Jesus gives us his blood for the forgiveness of all of our sins. And that will be the focus in our message here this evening. So we begin our worship then tonight with our hymn of confession, 613, to the omniscient Lord of all. sin and death, from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us. For our benefit, he became man so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God, and to deliver us, took upon himself our sin and the punishment we deserve. 
so that we may more confidently believe this and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. That is, it is as if he said, I became man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if he said, I have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities. I give myself unto death, shedding my blood to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins, and to comfort and establish the new testament, which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup confidently, believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in him, and has eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death, that he was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification. Giving him our most heartfelt thanks, we take up our cross and follow him, and according to his commandment, love one another as he has loved us. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread, and drink from the one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with the wine of many grapes, and one bread made from countless graves. So also we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of him we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and in truth. May the Almighty and merciful God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit, accomplish this in us. Amen. 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 I invite the congregation to stand for the confession of our sins. Having then heard the word of God, let us confess our sins to him, imploring him for the sake of his son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter suffering to death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. God, be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. yes. Let it be done for you as you believe. Instead, by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. You will surely do it. Go. In peace. Amen. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated then for our readings. The Old Testament reading then on this Monday, Thursday, is taken from the book of Exodus. 
17, chapter 3. All the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages, according to the commandment of the Lord, and camped at Rephidim. There was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They're almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the name of the place Massah and Meribah, because of the quarreling of the people of Israel, and because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. John, the fifth chapter, this reading will form the basis of our sermon then here this evening. St. John writes, Who is it 
that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is He who came by water and blood. Jesus Christ. Not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify. The Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar. Because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. That God gave us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite the congregation to please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 14th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. On the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus said to the disciples, where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room? Where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. There prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it, just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at the table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to him, one after the other, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread in the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. As they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for men. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May be seated then as we sing our hymn of the day in 445. <clears throat>
be to all of you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We've had a lot of piñatas over the years at birthday parties in our house, and every time we hoist one of those things up, there's a lot of excitement that ensues. And although piñatas feel very hard on the outside, we all know that they're completely hollow inside, because inside they're loaded with handfuls and handfuls of candy for the kids to enjoy. And how do the kids eventually get all of that candy? Well, you know the drill. One by one, they're blindfolded, and they're given a wiffle ball bat and have a couple of chances to take a few whacks at the pinata. There's a whole bunch of laughing. There's a whole bunch of screaming. There's a whole bunch of cheering until finally the pinata is whacked enough that the thing breaks open, the candy spills out all over the floor, and then the kids swoop in and gobble it all up. Well, when Jesus Christ was brutally crucified, his body hung up there on the cross like a pinata. And the people all around, they were laughing and screaming and they were cheering, but it wasn't with childlike joy. No, instead, you know the story, they were mocking him because they couldn't wait for him to die. But it wasn't until finally, six hours later, that a Roman soldier stepped up to the cross, took the tip of his spear, and plunged it deep into Jesus' side that the real treasure poured forth. Oh, it wasn't candy. It was an eternal treasure. We heard John tell us tonight what that treasure was. It was blood and water. John is the only gospel writer out of the four. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And John is the only writer, because he was the one out of those four that was there, who talks about the Roman soldier who struck Jesus' side with the spear. And only John adds this beautiful commentary about it that we heard tonight in our second reading, in our epistle, where he says, this is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three, he says, that testify. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And all three of these, he says, agree. Now, the early church fathers and the Reformation fathers never wavered on how to interpret these strange and difficult words of John. The water, they said, that poured forth from Jesus' side, where did it flow? They said, right into the baptismal font. And where did the blood that poured forth from Jesus' side, where did it flow? Into the chalice of the Lord's Supper. It's all pointing to what we're celebrating here tonight on this Monday, Thursday. Jesus giving us His blood and His Holy Supper for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Have you ever thought of the sacraments this way before? That they come from Jesus' side. And that baptism and the Lord's Supper would be worthless. And they would be useless without Jesus' crucifixion. In fact, the origin of the sacraments is the cross and the pierced, dead body of Christ. And once again, the church fathers were Johnny on the spot as they said that Jesus is, is like a holy temple on the cross who pours forth great treasures. You see, the piercing of Jesus' side poured forth heaven and eternal treasures that will never cease to flow this side of heaven. And what are those treasures? They're treasures of love, life, salvation, comfort, strength, and forgiveness that have no end. But it's not just the two sacraments, baptism and the Lord's Supper, that flow from Jesus' side. No, it's also the bride of Christ. 
church. Because remember the first bride, the very first human bride, where did she come from? God formed her where? From the side of Adam. And the church, the bride of Christ, where did she come from? She was formed from the new Adam, the second Adam, the last Adam, from his side, from the side of Jesus. Go back to our Old Testament reading here tonight from the book of Exodus. People of Israel are all worked up. It's kind of an amazing thing to think about. They've seen the ten plagues. They just went through the Passover. They've gone through the Red Sea. The Lord has been with them. He's rescued them. He's taken care of them all along the way. Now they get out into the desert of sin. They're, they're, they're parched for a little bit. There's dry, dusty conditions, and they're worried that now God's going to ditch them. They, they took them out here in the desert to die, and, they, and they're afraid they're going to die of dehydration. They're all worked up, and they want something to drink. So Moses is instructed by the Lord to take his staff, to strike a rock so that out would flow water to quench the people's thirst. Now, let's take it to the events of Holy Week here. Jesus is the new Moses. And isn't it ironic that just as Moses struck a rock to bring out water, so a Roman soldier would take a spear and also strike a rock. The rock of all ages, Jesus Christ. And he would bring out blood and water. A blood and water that would cleanse and redeem from sin. That's why I don't want you to leave here tonight without recognizing this amazing treasure that you receive here. The body and blood of Christ, pierced, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. What you receive here at this table is far more exciting and far more meaningful than my kids busting up a pinata at their birthday party. The riches that pour forth from Jesus' side are the water of holy baptism and the blood of the Lord's table. They're the source of the church. They're the fountain of life. They're the means by which all that Jesus accomplished during Holy Week 2,000 years ago are now brought to us today. Oh yes, it's, it's really easy to sit around this week and kind of reminisce about what Jesus did for us. To pray, to read, to even talk about what Jesus did. We can talk about how he lived, what he said, what he did. That's all very important because Martin Luther called the church a mouth house. He said, we come in here and the Lord, he does all the talking, we do all the listening because he's got the words of eternal life. But sometimes the Lord knows that we even need more than words. Sometimes the Lord knows we need action. We need touch. We need to feel it. Sometimes we actually need that personal touch. The personal touch whereby we receive the blessings of what Jesus accomplished for us. His life, His death, His resurrection. And how, how does that happen? How do we receive that? Well, John tells us tonight through the Holy Spirit. How does He work? He works through the water and the blood, through the sacraments. That's how He testifies to bring to you the blessings of the cross. So, as you come to the altar here tonight, you're not just going to receive bread and wine but you're also going to receive his body and blood. Because what did Jesus tell us tonight in our gospel reading? In the, in the words of institution? He said, this is my blood. He didn't say this symbolizes. He didn't say this represents. He didn't say this signifies. He said, this is my blood. This is my blood of the covenant. And then notice the interesting word choice he has right after that. This is my blood of the covenant, 
which is poured out. Poured out for my son for the forgiveness of all of your sins. That's what we're celebrating here tonight. Those treasures, those blessings that poured forth from Jesus' pierced side. That's the origin. And the good news is, they keep on flowing. Oh yes, it's always going to be a wonderful thing for the kids to come to a birthday party, you know, and swing at the pinata until it finally bursts open with candy. But what you receive here tonight from the body of Christ, from the church, from His side, is so much greater. You receive grace, mercy, love, compassion, forgiveness, salvation, righteousness, eternal life. Those treasures, those things are yours forever. His side is open now. It's pouring forth those great treasures and blessings. So come and gather his treasure. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding, guarding you, your heart, mind, and faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. This time then I invite the congregation to please kneel for the prayer of the church. Let us then pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Everlasting Father, your Son offered himself through the eternal Spirit as a sacrifice without blemish. By this sacrifice, purify our conscience from dead works. We may serve you always in newness and holiness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, amid plagues, enemies, and a world filled with conflict and terror, give us wise leaders, O Lord. Preserve us from harm. Guide those who make and administer our laws to act prudently. Give to all judges knowledge to render justice with mercy. Bless all who are in the military, emergency, and medical workers here and abroad. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God of Israel, we rally today to your altar as we leave the wilderness of this world and sin behind. Hear our prayers, O Lord, for all who are sick and those who are recovering. We especially pray this day that you would be with Patrick Eby, who was in an accident this afternoon. Refresh them in their suffering, comfort them with your word, and nourish them in body and soul. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, you have freed your church from slavery to this world and gathered us around your holy mountain. Hearing again the proclamation of your New Testament, cleanse us through Christ's body and blood, which was offered for us and poured out for us on the cross of Calvary. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, then, O oh Lord, we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, in all things. Redeem us, O oh Lord, faithful God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. 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 I invite the congregation then to stand. Is the offering will be brought forward. As the offering is brought forward, we'll sing the offertory, reading me a clean heart.
to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. This is really good right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Grant us your spirit, gracious Father, that we may give heed to the testament of your Son in true faith, and above all, firmly take to heart the words with which Christ gives to us his body and blood for our forgiveness. By your grace, lead us to remember and give thanks for the boundless love which he manifested to us when by pouring out his precious blood, he saved us from your righteous wrath and from sin, death, and hell. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine that is his body and blood as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke and gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Congregation then to stand as we sing to the Lord, let now your servant be part of peace. <laughs> Thank you. 